Welcome to the demo of building Marble Racer program within Scratch. First step is to launch Scratch, and that's this little icon down here on a Mac. It'll look a little different, but if you find Scratch, you can download it from scratch.mit.edu, I believe it is, and uh, download, install, Scratch, launch Scratch. What you'll find is on the left-hand side, these are, well, first of all, here on this canvas, the, the objects called sprites are, are shown here and you can do different things with them. You can move them around, change their appearance. Here's where we'll put our scripts, which are the actions that we're going to associate with these uh, sprites over here. And then on the left, we can see the list of the actions. Instead of typing in commands, we drag and drop commands over. Up here on the upper left is where we see the categories of the different types of actions that can be performed. So uh, in motion, we can see uh, we change the X and Y. So X is left and right, Y is up and down. If we inc increase Y, we go up. If we increase X, we go to the right and vice versa. So uh, we can move, we can change appearance, we can record our own sounds to play, and uh, we could have a pen that moves around on the screen, and then we can have the different things uh, for controlling our scripts, like for loops and making decisions, and then we can detect if things are touching other colors or other sprites, other objects. And if we want to do some sort of math, we can do that in here as well. And then if we need to keep track of some values, we can use variables and make variables to store values. So we're going to use these things in turn. Um, for instance, for the little default cat that comes up here, let's say we want to start in control and say when the flag is clicked, then we want to uh, move it by a couple of steps. So that would be motion here. So we could say uh, how about if we move... 10 steps, and then we turn 15 degrees. And so if we're satisfied with this, we can just hit play, with the, which is the green flag over here on the right, and then we can see that, that it works. Um, then in addition, we could put under control a loop in here. We could repeat a certain number of steps, and again, we just drag and drop and put these into place. And so let's say we wanted to move um, 10 degrees, and we wanted to do this um, 36 times. Here we go. We could have it go in a circle. So those are the basics. Now for each of these sprites over here, by clicking on the sprite, you can determine what the actions are for it, the appearances of it, and then you can also associate sounds with that sprite. So uh, we could also have the cat over here. We click on it um, after, let's go back to scripts, and then after it's done this, we could have it play a sound. So, uh, where's the sound? There we go, play the sound. And notice there's only one sound associated with it right now, so there's only one on the drop-down list, and we could record our new sound. So here we go again, and now when, when we go, and so we hear the meow, playing in the background, and uh, we could record our own. So that's a background for, for, uh, for Scratch. Now let's move on to creating the marble racer. So first thing, let's clean up here and, and let's get, get rid of the cat. So we'll take our sprite and we'll, well, let's make sure it's not running anymore. Just right click on the sprite and then hit delete. So that's gone. And uh, we want to change our stage to make a green background with a path going around. So we'll go up here to backgrounds, click on paint, and inside of paint we'll choose the paint can to fill an area. So here's our paint can. We'll choose a color which is say this green right here. We'll click and it'll create the background. Then we also want to create the circular track that goes around. So we'll click on the paintbrush, make the brush size to be really large, make a brownish sort of color here, yeah, I guess that's fine. And we'll uh, create a track that goes around. So there's our marble racing track. And uh, then we also want to create a new sprite. And when we create an, a new sprite, we can choose a sprite from a file. And if we do that, we could see there's there's lots of different kinds of of objects, balls, and all that we could choose from. 
but in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to make our own sprite by painting our sprite. So we're going to go back into paint. We're going to choose the circle. And then um, by holding shift down, we can keep the, the proportions of the circle. So we'll make a ball. And then um, just to make it sort of a 3D effect, we'll go into the paint can again. And we'll choose this effect down here. We'll reverse the black and the white to switch the colors. And we'll come in here and we'll just give it a little dot like that to give it that 3D effect. So, okay, so there's our ball. We can put the ball over here on the track. And let's also put a finish line up there. So we'll say a new sprite and let's paint that again. And let's make the color red, get a rectangle, and we'll just make a finish line that looks like that. And we can take our finish line and put it right there. So uh, we've, we've painted it. We could also put some, some text on here if we wanted to. Uh, let's go back to the stage. And, uh, and we could edit the stage. And we could put some, uh, some text in there. Where is that? Oh, here it is. And uh, Marble Racer, read. UIC, CS, whatever the case might be of the information that you want to put up there, and we could put it out of the way. So identifying information. All right, there we go. So now let's think about actually moving the, the ball of how we would do that. We're going to click on the, the uh, actually we'll, yeah, we'll click on the, the sprite for the ball. It's called Sprite 1, which that's a bit inconvenient to refer to it. So let's go up here. Instead of Sprite 1, we'll click on Ball. And uh, similarly for the Finish Line, we'll click on that. Instead of Sprite 2, we'll go up here, change its name to Finish Line. And uh, the stage, that's fine. We can just leave that the way it is. So we're going to associate actions with the ball. And so here it's still on costumes because we had painted it. So we need to go back over to scripts. So now under scripts, we want to, when it's when the green flag gets clicked, we want the arrow keys to move the ball. So we go here to control when the green flag is clicked. Um, then we want to say, um, we want to check and see if the down arrow was pressed. So let's go into sensing and say here, key. And if it was pressed, ah, we need an if in there. So that's back under control. Um, we could say, if the down arrow was pressed, then down arrow was pressed, then we want to take the ball and we want to move it down. So uh, that would be the y-axis, decreasing the y-axis. So we could say uh, change y by, and we could say minus 10 here to go down. So Plus y is up, minus y is down. And when we run this, we're going to have a problem. So here we run it, and I'm hitting down arrow, and nothing happens. And the reason is because when we started, we blew right past this right away. What we need to do is we need to put this in a loop instead of just leaving it there as an if statement. So go back to, let's stop the program from running, go back to the control, and we'll say uh, we could have, say, a forever loop here. And now we could put this in there. We're looping forever. And so now when we start it, now when I click my down arrow, it jumps down. Now that's a little bit kludgy. We don't want it just to jump like that. We want it to float. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a value, which is the amount of change left and right, say x change, and the amount of change up and down. We'll call that the y change. And we're going to, in the loop here, we're going to say uh, keep looping forever, change it by the x amount, change it to y amount, and we're just going to keep going depending on the, the, the keys pressed, is going to then change that variable. So let, let me repeat that again. Well, actually, let me just show you how that would work. So we're going to have to, to change this. And also, when we start out, we want to put the ball back to its starting position, which we can see down by watching the X and Y down here. That tracks the mouse cursor that this is at 141.5. So uh, we could make a separate flag here to say when it's, when it's clicked, uh, to start things off. So we want to set the x value and the y value of the ball. And I think we said 141 and 5. So now when we start it, 
even if the, the, if the ball had been moved somewhere else and we start it, it's going to go back to a starting position right there. And then we want to have uh, some way to keep track of what's the current amount of change in the left and right, the x direction, the amount of change up and down in the y direction. And for that, we're going to need variables. So let's go over here to, to variables and let's make a variable to keep track of this. And so we'll make one called the x change. And then notice that all these other things appear, such as what is the current value for x change it pops up. If we wanted that to disappear, we could just click on this and it doesn't show up on the screen anymore. And we'll make another one for the y change. And when we click the arrow keys left, right, up, and down, what we're going to do is we're going to add numbers to the x and the y change. Um, so uh, let's, I'm, I'm going to, I'm making this a little bit of a shortcut for you. Well, not, never mind. Let me keep going. So uh, let's go back here to the actions for the ball. When we start out, now we want to take our forever loop. And inside of our forever loop, what we want to do is, uh, is move it according to the x change and the y change. So we're going to say uh, change x by x change and change y by the y change. Okay, And so here is where I want to put that variable. So I go back on variables and I put that in there. And similar for y. And there it is. So now what I need to do is with my arrow keys, is my arrow keys are going to change this value. So if the value for my x change goes up, then it's going to move left and right more quickly. If it goes down, it's going to move left and right more slowly, similarly for up and down. Okay, so let's create here now uh, a place to handle these, these arrow keys. And this again, we want this to be in some kind of a loop so that it keeps looping forever. So let's go in here and say, if the down arrow key was pressed, then we want to change the, so up and down would be the y change a variable. I would say change the y change by some amount. So this is something that's going to have to be different. Um, let's take a look at, uh, what would this be here? For our motion, right? So, um, well, we already got that there, but we want it to be Y. And you can just drag on top of some other one. Oh, by the way, if you wanted to move things out, you could just do that. And if you want to delete it, you can right-click on it and choose Delete. We can also just drag it off the screen and it disappears like that. So what we want to do is we want to change Y by the value Y change. When down, down arrow is pressed. And now I'd like to duplicate this for up arrow. So this is really handy, the stamp. Okay, duplicate. Click on this, the if block, put it where I want it, and there we go. So if up arrow is pressed, then I want y change times negative 1. So now I need to do some math for this right here. So I'll go into operators, and I'll choose multiplication. Put the multiplication in there, put the y change in there, and then I'll click negative 1 for this spot. And it's kind of small, so you got to click right in there. There we go. Change y by negative 1, by, so it's going to be negative y change. So my up arrow is going to make y go up, and negative is going to likewise go down. I don't know if that's still running. So uh, let's try this now and, and see what happens. So when I click the flag, there's my ball, and so my up and down arrows should work to do something now. Let's see. Oh, it's not working. What's the problem here? Keep down arrow. Oh, I know what the problem is. The value for x and y change is zero, so that's no good. I need to set that value to be some non-zero value when I start out. So uh, we'll do that up here in this initialization section. So here we'll set x change and set y change to something here, x and y. So they're set to be zero, and I want them to be some other value. And if I need to change that later, I'd have to change it in both places. So in fact, I'll make a separate variable to be um, increment amount. Um, yeah. So I'll just call it increment. And then uh, I can set the increment to say 0 0.2. And then I can just drag increment into this one and into this one. So now instead of having to edit and change it here and change it here, I can just change it in one place and it updates the other. So that's some of the power 
the variables that we have. So now we can try this again. We take our uh, and start, and now if my up and my down arrows, we can see that it moves it. Every time I click on it, it moves it just a little bit. But what we want it to do is we want it to continually move. We don't want it to, so we want it to essentially float. So we don't want to uh, have to just click it once and have it move that amount. We want it to continue to move in that direction. It's important to make sure that your blocks are clicked into place. Right now, if we play, we're not going to get what we want because this is not part. So if we run, then we don't actually change X and Y. We're up and down arrows. We, we press our up and down arrows. It has no effect over here on the ball because this is, in fact, not clicked into place. So we can uh, make sure that's clicked into place. And now we can try it. And here we go. Now when we hit the up and down arrows, we can see, in fact, that it starts working. Okay, uh, probably a good idea. We could actually um, start out with setting these to zero so that it doesn't drift in any direction when we start out. So we can just leave those. In fact, the default would be zero if we didn't do anything. And so now instead of it drifting, when we start a program, it just sits there, doesn't move. And then when we do the arrows, it can start moving up and down like that. Next thing to do is to get the left and right to work as well. And so let's duplicate these blocks down here and pop them into place. And for the, um, so this would be left arrow. And we're going to decrement the X change. That's the left and right variable. And for the right arrow, then we're going to, again, now increment X change. So, this should work for all the directions. So when we start, we can go up and down. We can also go left and right. Next thing we need to do is have it when it hits the grass, we want to set the value of X change or Y change to be a smaller. You know, want it to slow it down, basically. So uh, we'll come up here in our forever loop and we'll detect if it is touching a color. And oh, we need an if statement in here as well. So we'll say, if it's touching the color and the color is green, then we want to set the value for the variable. And uh, so X change to be, um, a, let's say, 0.75. So that's, make sure you don't forget the decimal point, times the value of X change or whatever the, the current value of it is, um, like that. And then similarly for Y change, so we'll just duplicate this block, change that to Y change, and then we'll just click this into place. And let's try it out. So we're going down, it's fine, I'm speeding up. And let's say I get going really fast and I hit the grass and it almost stops, right? So I got to get back onto the track and then it starts moving again. So, all right. And now we want it to also do something when it hits the finish line. So uh, again, we're going to need another if statement here, where if it hits the finish line, and we can go into sensing and say if it is touching the finish line, then what we want it to have it do is we want it to say, Yes, for two seconds, and then we'll have it stop, and we'll put that in there as well. And now we can go around and try, oh, and in these variables, we could get rid of these variables if we wanted to. Um, let's go into variables and say, don't show these anymore. Um, in sensing, there's also something called timer. You could put a timer in there. And notice the timer starts counting as soon as you put it in there. So it's a good idea in your code where you increment things to put reset timer in there so that when you hit start, it starts it at zero. So now we should go through, uh, set everything up in our loop, change the X and Y value by the amounts of these variables. If it's touching green, it slows it down. If it's touching the finish line, it says yes, and then it stops. If you wanted to, you could put some, play some sound and record some sound in there as well. You probably want to put that before it says yes, because as it starts playing the sound, it's going to continue and undo this. 
If you hit stop right away when it's just starting the sound, then it might not, you might not even hear the sound at all. So let's try this out. Let's see if we can make it. So here we go. I'm not a gamer as you can see. You can see. Whoa. All right. Yes. And there we go.